Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. I think this is part three of uh, Fiat Money. And this is part of, you know, I'm telling about what the plan is, the 100-year plan, 100 plan that's destroying our whole world right now. Uh, but you have to understand what Fiat Money is in a Federal Reserve Bank and how they use it against us. Because I haven't even got to how they get to, that's in the next whatever, the next series of videos. This should be the last one, though. 1913, we bought, we uh, brought back Federal, oh, Federal Reserve Bank under the Federal Reserve Act, 1913. And do you know who that was? That was Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Now, you know, I looked in the Wikipedia, and Wikipedia says that Woodrow Wilson is related to George Bush. George H.W. Bush. Well, it would be both Bushes. Uh, he, he, he did the, he did that. Okay, so anyways, like I said, we're, we didn't even, we didn't even talk about the interest yet. To get out of debt, you can give back every dollar on the planet, and that would only pay the principal. Then you have no money to pay the interest. So you have to borrow money to pay the interest, but that makes more debt. <laughs> Stuck in a cycle and need to grow GDP to stop inflation. You know, it has a built-in uh, deficit. You know what I mean? It's built in to uh, inflation is going to go up. You know, and, and that's, the, that's why it has an expiration date by definition. It's not by, you know, some of them make it uh, by definition. There is an expiration date because the, uh, you know, it, Inflation will go like this, and eventually, 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 any society, this is what, and then it'll go straight up <laughs> till your society collapses. Because your inflation is like 10 million, you know, your dollar. Now you need 10 million of them just buy, to buy a can of Coke. Uh, stuck in a cycle, it needs to grow cheating. Oh, I'll say, uh, money transfer to banks. Oh, yeah, it's just a way to get money to be transferred. You know, from you to the banks. You know what I mean? They make the money, they give it to us, and now they want it back. So, you know, they, they let you buy houses and cars, and you have to pay them back. You have to give it, you know what I mean? Uh, I want to bring this up, too. There's this case with Jer Jerome Daly versus Minnesota, or versus someone in Minnesota, I can't. 1969. <clears throat> Couldn't pay his mortgage. Uh, so he... Um, Make loans and accept. Okay, so he fought them. He said, he said a contract, uh, you know, for a home that we had, you know, I was going to, they were going to give me money, and I was going to give them a loan contract. That was what our contract was. That's what the bank and me signed. Here's the thing that's saying that that's what we're going to do. Okay, but remember. With the fractional banking, what does the modern, uh, whatever say, the modern money uh, mechanics, what does modern, uh, whatever say? It says that you create money. You don't loan out money, right? You create it. Remember, they kept that, that excess reserve and the reserve, and they just printed up money out of thin air and gave it out as a loan, right? So they never gave, they never, they didn't keep their contract. They gave him credits. They didn't give him money, okay? And credits aren't tangible. It's not the same as money. Uh, on like, it says modern money mechanics, fractional reserve banking. Uh, you make loans. You accept promissory notes in exchange for credits, not money. And the bank actually admitted it. That that's what they did, you know? And so he won that case, that uh, Jerome Daly. And they couldn't take his house because they never gave him any money. It was just fake money. That they, they don't have the right to print that money up. Just because someone wrote a book calling, you know, modern money mechanics, it doesn't mean that that's law. I can write, I can write a book right now and say, you know, uh, I'm allowed to whatever. I'm allowed to go punch people in the face. That doesn't mean I can go punch people in the face and just show my booklet saying, oh, look, I, I wrote this book, though. It says that I can punch people in the face. No, that ain't the way it goes. 
But anyways, where are we at here? You can never be debt free in this system. You can only get more and more in debt until you, your inflation is so high that your society will collapse. That's literally the definition of fiat money. At the end, your society will collapse. Not, not it's not my opinion. Or if, if you, you know, if you're the best of the best, you can no, you can't, you can't whatever. You know, it's like gambling at uh, the casino. You you can gamble and double your money. You know, and that might, that might you put you maybe do that every day. Double your money for a hundred years, but sooner or later you're gonna lose. <laughs> and you're not gonna double it. You're gonna lose your money, right? That's a fact, right? Given enough time, you cannot every day win and double your money gambling. It's not possible. You know, even if it takes a hundred years, or you know, in our case, it's been 240 years. Say we got another, say 300 years. Uh, so anyways, so this is like basically the rich people, you know, they can't enslave the entire population. And if they do, they have to house them. You have to feed them. Uh, it's, it's actually more profitable and easier uh, to be hands off. And instead of have like slave slaves, you know, like you can be, you know, chain or do whatever you want, like that kind of slave. It's better to have an economic slave. An economic slave is when the slave feeds and houses himself. Because we're basically just, at this point right now, we're just, when we pay our taxes and that, and the government gets that money, that, that just covers the interest. That just covers the interest. And then we're printing money at, uh, up at the same time, which means our interest is going to be more than... And it's good, you know what I mean? And we're not going to be able to cover the interest. That's when, that's when it, everything, your society collapses. When, when you can't pay the interest, people lose faith. And that's because fiat money is only based on faith. It's not based on any gold or anything. It's not based on nothing but faith. And if you lose faith, you usually lose faith when you can't even pay the damn interest on your loan. When you lose faith... <laughs> Okay, I got three more things to say before I go here. I want to talk about the first, the, the, the Federal Reserve Bank. There was three banks made in the United States, okay? Uh, like 20 years after we made the country, 1791 to 1811, we made the first Federal Reserve Bank, okay? And what is that, 20 years? That ain't that bad, right? But then five years later, in 1860 to 1836, we, we do another first Federal Reserve Bank. Most likely these are wars. Uh, but then finally, you know, okay, it only lasted 20 years again. Okay, so it's not bad. Uh, so Andrew Jackson got rid of it in 1836. And we did really good, almost 100 years, to 1913. And then again... We got another Federal Reserve Bank, even though everyone knew how evil it was. That's why we kept getting rid of it once we got it. We tried to get rid of it so we didn't get in that cycle. Uh, so we were smart the first time, 20 years. Oh, well. We were smart the second time, 20 years. Okay. Now this t next time, it's been like 100 years that we've had this Federal Reserve Bank. Now look what it's done. It's a plan to control us. It gets us into debt. And uses inflation and interest to get us into debt so that they can control us. And their whole objective is to just bankrupt us. They want to, what it is, is they want a new monetary system like China, you know, where you got your social skill and you, got, you can't get on a computer unless you do a face recognition and they get an IDU chip in your, in your arm and everybody, no more money that you can hold in your hand. It's all going to be electronic. That way, if you don't listen to them, they just press a button and you're cut off from your, you know, everything. So if you can't, you can't buy meat, if you, get, if you don't have the, uh, you know, the computer chip plug in, you can't buy, you can't buy anything. There's no money except for the chip, the chip on the, you know, that. So, uh, yeah, that's what they want. And, and the last time we changed our monetary system was after World War II. So you need a big 
thing. You need something major to change something so major, you know, uh, globally, like the monetary system. Okay, that's why they want World War Three. They want to spend, spend, spend as much money as they can. Right. This will make inflation go up, like you know, and then that bubble will form and bubble will form. But they don't just want you know, a, a, a little bump. They want the entire globe. Every time that, that little girl on the sidewalk selling lemonade, her business has to pop too, along with the rest of the economy. Everything has to pop. That way they can replace it. We'll all be, you know, uh, starving. You know what I mean? Uh, they'll come in, swoop in and say, just like they're doing with Ukraine right now. Oh, we're helping you. We're helping you. Like they started the war. They fund the war. <laughs> they come in after the or, and they say, well, we're helping you. We're going to fix all that stuff we just blown up. No, the people we can't, we know they're still dead. But we're going to build them. We're going to buy your property for penny on the dollars because you're all starving. And we're going to give you a bunch of food. Won't that be nice to have food? Oh, don't worry. We're going to take all your freedoms. All your, we've got misinformation now. No one can talk. It's just like in China. Uh, we can do whatever we want. And no one will know about it because we only have one. We're going to get rid of Fox. Uh, only have CNN. <laughs> you know. Uh, but I forget what I was saying. I think that's pretty much it on Fiat Money. I only got three minutes left, so I'm going to babble a little bit. Uh, yeah. The, the, I'm going to actually do a next video on the relationships of these presidents and these elites okay because there's a bunch of prongs but the first problem i'm going to go into is the wef and the bush family uh you know the deep state the deep state and the wef basically uh and then sooner or later i will get to george soros and believe it or not it's not just george soros the original George Soros was Henry Kissinger, believe it or not. I haven't confirmed, confirmed it, but I've confirmed it enough, to, to, especially after everything else I've confirmed, I believe it. You know what I mean? Uh, but this is one of the things that if you want, you know, these, even if you stamp out the communism, the Nazism, and the, the this and the that, and the feminism, and you get everything back on track, and blah, 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 get rid of all the elites. Yeah, you know, how do I kill them? Okay, let's say, or magically, you, spend, you know, they just di disappear. If you keep the Federal Reserve Bank, it'll just grow back. Because they have no overseer. The government, they're private. They got the government barely can even go in their building. Okay, they have actually more pot. They tell the government screw off, man. Uh, and they will just see. It's not people think that the, you want to be a billionaire and that's how you get power and that's how you get money and that's true. Okay, but the real power, you know, that kind of power there. That's like for the ten ten percenters. But the one percent of the one percent, the way you really make money. The way you really get control, the way you really have power, power beyond any rich, you know, you know, Elon Musk, he ain't nothing. He, Trump, crap, even if they were both president, they ain't shit power-wise. The people who have the power are the people who control the, uh, the, the rate at which money is printed. If you can print money and you can contract money, that's how you control everyone because that's how you control the economy. That's how you control the economy going into a depression. And then you swoop in and you buy all the property on pennies for the dollar. And then you print up a whole bunch of money so that they can get out of the depression. And if they don't print up money fast enough, like in 1929, you will have a great, great, great depression. Okay. And... <laughs> Because they, they waited too long, you know what I mean? They contracted the money, and they, they were supposed to print it back up, you know, so to get us out of it after they bought everything, but they, it, it took too long, and it became a great depression.